Hello and welcome to Press Row. We've got the normal cast of characters here at the WOSN studios ready to talk high school sports. Joined by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Week three of high school football is in the books. We're getting ready for week four, which means everyone will be in league play. Not everyone. Not everyone? Well, LCC, of course. Well, <laughs> if you have a league. Right. Okay. You scared me there. For I, just, I just had to get that yeah. in. Toledo City League teams aren't in league play either. Just want to throw that out. Okay. Are well, they watching WOSN? They could be watching it through the live stream. Uh, okay, then we'll give them that minute chance. <laughs> <laughs> almost, every, safe to say, yeah. almost everyone in league play. We've got a good one in the NWC coming up this week. Who do you like, Allen East versus Jefferson? I like that it's, that it's on a Saturday night. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah, it's nice. They'll have that little spotlight game, a little LCC playing on Saturday night as well this week. Got a couple of Saturday games after not having a few the last couple of weeks. But, you know, when, when is the last time Allen East Jefferson has been a relevant contest? That's, that's a, a great thing to have these old time NWC powers lining up. And, you know, Jefferson 2 and 1, Allen East 3 and 0. Two teams that love to run the ball, two teams that are very good at running the ball. It should be a, a fun one at Stadium Park on, on Saturday. This is a game that, guys, has a 7 o'clock kick, might be over at 9 o'clock. Yeah. It might be over by 9, by nine o'clock. Not like a lot of throwing. Probably game. not a whole bunch of throwing. I think the, the advantage, if you look at it, just going into this game, would have to favor Jefferson. The reason being they're more of an up-tempo, smash-mouth type of run first, run first, run a little more. But, you know, Allen East, I'll tell you what, I think they're the feel-good story to start out the season right now at 3-0. and But they're, they'll mix it up a little bit. They want to run the ball, but at the same time, they'll throw the ball. And you can see Cam Staley's imprint on this defense, being very aggressive, attacking the football, attacking receivers, and making plays. And, I mean, so far, 3-0, they're off to a good start. Well, you know, the other part is Jefferson obviously has played real teams. Yes. Allen East has played three winless teams. So this is one of those pump-the-brakes, heat-check games. Is Allen East for real? We'll see. We know Jefferson can hang with good teams. We know they're physical. They will pound you. Allen East, this is a tester for them. 3-0 and against teams that are combined 0-9. Now we're However, stepping it up. They're 3-0 and against teams that are 0-9, but there haven't been close calls. They have taken care of business against sure. those three teams. They haven't just squeaked by and gotten close wins. They have dominated those games, which I think is an important step forward for this Mustang team. Right, and another step forward will be, can they play with Jefferson and or beat them? And if they do, then it'll really be the feel-good story yeah. of the season after four weeks. Well, it's uh, exciting for the Mustangs to get to go against the defending league champs in their league opener, especially after, like you said, not being tested. One of the things like you brought up, Aaron, that I noticed about Allen East is their defense being stronger. And speaking of good defense, Coldwater's defense has been outstanding. Coldwater's defense has not given up their first team defense, has not given up any points yet. When will they give up their first points? Well, looking ahead, October 9th is when they play, play very local. local. Yeah. Although, hey, let's not sleep on St. Henry. St. Right. Henry has got a very good offense. They've got a, a solid rushing attack. I, and I, I've said all along, St. Henry could be the sleeper team in the MAC this season. This will be, the, I think, the first test of how good St. Henry is. I don't know if they're going to be good enough to beat Coldwater. Let's face it, they haven't beaten Coldwater since I think Bill Clinton was president. It's been a long time. Yeah. But I think, I think if they can give Coldwater a game, we'll know St. Henry's back. Yeah, and, and you got to think they might score. You know, they're not going to get shut out, at least. But uh, the point is, Coldwater's defense, we thought it might be really good when they shut out Kenton, although Kenton's not at the level they have been. And they got another almost shut out. It's the second week against Jefferson, as we said, the, the second team. Last week, they blanked Minster. Uh, we get it. The Coldwater defense is pretty good. I think St. Henry scores, but whether or not it is on that first team defense remains to be seen. I think Coldwater is the favorite going into this one. Uh, but, you know, nice to see St. Henry turning around. State ranked in the first polls as well that came out this week, too. And one thing I did notice watching the, the Minster Coldwater game on WOSN, and I tweeted this out, was how, how calm, how collected Jack Hemelgarm is at quarterback for the Cavaliers. Very comfortable in the pocket. They had no problem stepping up and, and making throws as the pocket was collapsing around him. Really, what you would like to see out of a senior quarterback that, you know, is paying the dividends from the playing time he saw last year. I was going to say, I think, and I watched some of that as well on the replay too, Mark, and I thought when I watched that, that Hemelgarn getting that experience that he got a year ago helped him because there were times where they would take Brody Hoying out even after he came back from the knee injury just to give Hemelgarn some play and give him some run there because he did such a solid job for them when Brody Hoying went down back in week two a year ago against Hartley uh, with a sprained knee, came back a couple weeks later and was good to go. But 
I mean, Jack Hel Helmogarn is just, you know, cool hand Luke in the pocket there. And he's got plenty of offensive weapons to distribute the ball to, and is doing a good job of getting keeping PD Post involved. You go to you got Harlemert and Shane Harris receivers, and a Homan as a receiver as well. So plenty of offensive weapons to go along with that very strong defense for the Cavaliers. And then staying in the MAC quickly, let's get your opinion on another big one: two defending state champs again, Port Minster. I mean, I mean they're not Port Minster; they're the defending state champs. But Coldwater and Marion back to back. How do the Wildcats bounce back from a tough loss against Coldwater against another very formidable opponent? Well, maybe the question shouldn't be how does Minster bounce back. How does Marin Local play a good team? They've had the last right. two weeks. They weren't off, but they were playing teams they were clearly better and have not been tested since week one where Macomb gave them everything they could want and more. So I think in the matchup for me is more how does Marin Local respond to playing a good team again after having easy wins over Bealsville and New Bremen, taking on a Minster team that's, that's out to prove something. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. This is what Marion Local has been waiting for since week one when they got a real tester on the road, then two laughers now are back in league play against a, another contender. I think this is a measuring stick to see how good Marion Local can be and how they'll match up uh, comparative scores, I guess, to maybe look ahead to their matchup with Coldwater. But uh, really, is Marion Local up to that level? We'll get to see a little bit more against Minster. I want to see how resilient Coldwater is, or not Coldwater, but rather uh, Minster is in this game. Can they bounce back from getting shut out a week ago with a high-powered offense, a quarterback that a lot of people feel could be the best one in the area, and Josh Nixon as well. And how will this team come back playing their style of football against a team that's going to want to dictate the tempo on the ground as far as with their running game and Marion Local? Yeah, they're going to mix things up as well. But also in the defense, their attack mode defense that they have going against a uh, potential high-powered offense in uh, Minster this week. Should be a lot of fun to watch that one play out. Well, I'm a seniors 3-0 on the season, and the big story for them, of course, their offense. But last year, we know it was the defense that kind of came up short when they needed him most. So will the defense be good enough this year to get Mike Fell and the Spartans over that hump past week 11 and, and make be serious playoff contenders? I think they've got to look full squarely on week four and a team in Whitmer that has had their number, mm -hmm. you know, several years, including two years ago, where the Spartans got 83 hung on them in week 10. They got 42 hung on them last year in snow, sleet, rain, wind, you name it, it was coming from the elements. But I think the best thing that could have happened to the Spartans football team, other than a loss, happened to them last Friday night. They were tested. They had to prove to themselves that they can get into the trenches and get into a foxhole, get into a fight, and come out victorious. Having to go double overtime against Piqua, I think, was a very good test for this team coming into track play. I think you look at what happened to Lima Senior in the playoff game last year, the way they, they had the big lead, couldn't hold on to it, couldn't come up with the goal line stand at the end of the game that could have won the game for them. Had all the same type of situation occurring last week at Piqua, but this time the defense came up in overtime, made the stops they needed to get that overtime victory. And as you pointed out with Whitmer, last year that game played up at, uh, in Whitmer, almost in Michigan, because Whitmer's about a half a mile from the Michigan border. Alexis Road, baby. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it was snow. It was sleet. And when I, we talked to Coach Fell during the warm-up this year, that's one of the things we, we talked about. The, the track schedules kind of flipped this year. Instead of getting Wimmer at the end of the year with the nasty weather, they got Wimmer at the beginning of the year, and this Lima Senior offense does perform better when the weather is warmer and it doesn't have those elements to it. So Lima Senior is glad to have Wimmer to open track play instead of close track play. Yeah, I can imagine this week in practice that Coach Mike Fell is pulling out all the motivational tactics because there's a lot of them left over from last year. We thought we were good, Whitmer mopped the floor with us. We thought we were tough, we quit. The weather was bad, we got down early, we packed up our tent and went home. You were to there. To me, yeah, they, and they did. They literally just shut it down in that game. They didn't need the game per se, but uh, it's a gut check time for Lima Senior. As good as that test was with Piqua, Whitmer's been the bully on the block. Aaron mentioned the 83-point deal a couple years ago, and they really – took care of business last year too. So Spartans get them at home this time. Uh, the weather will be nice. There's no excuses. It's time to beat Whitmer. And I, I can just imagine Coach Fells rolling out some of those things here this week. By the way, a little bit more motivation for the Spartans. That 83 is the most that's ever been hung on them in school history. Uh, it was ugly. And yep. last year it wasn't that bad statistically, but uh, attitudinally mm -hmm. it was that bad. Right. And I think that's the most important thing this week. Even if they don't end up winning the game, they need to prove to themselves and to Whitmer and to the track and to other people that they can go out there and slug it out with a team like the Panthers. 
big track opener for the Spartans. You can see it on WOSN Saturday night at 10 p.m., one of five rebroadcast games for you on the schedule this week. Let's move to the NFL now. Week one is in the books. Bengals look good. Are the Bengals that good or the Raiders that bad? What did we learn? Well, you know, it, it's rare to have that lopsided of the game in the NFL as much as we all joke about how bad teams are. It's very rare to have a 30 to nothing game at any point in NFL games. Uh, the Raiders obviously were undermanned when their quarterback went down and it snowballed on them. But I do think the Bengals can be very productive offensively. They're healthy right now. A.J. Green's not dinged up. Tyler Eifert is actually playing and, and scoring. And scoring. So I, you know, I don't know if the Bengals are that good, but I do think offensively that is a good representation of what they can do. I mean, even the Browns scored last week, so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Raiders eventually did score, but it didn't go over the 50 until the fourth quarter, which is high school stuff. It doesn't happen in the NFL very often. I think you'll see the Raiders improve so much as much as it pains me to say that because <laughs> being a fan. Chiefs fan, yeah. I cannot stand the Raiders. I like, but I do like Jack Del Rio, their head coach. I think he will make some improvements, you know, and will it happen long term? Who knows? But as Todd mentioned, when they lost their quarterback, the snowball turned into an avalanche for them on Sunday, and it had nothing to do with Amari Cooper getting his head caved in by Pac-Man on the back <laughs> of a helmet either. But, but now the Bengals back at home with San Diego, who has got a little playoff history over Cincinnati. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get a better idea of how many. And Bubba Miller, thought. baby. No. No, he yeah. got he got waived. So ah. that's a bummer of the week that uh, Kyle got waived. But, I, you know, the, the other thing for Cincinnati is that will be interesting throughout the season is their motivation because nobody cares if they get in the playoffs. They only care if they finally advance in the playoffs. But in order to set up that scenario, you need to have a good season so maybe you can be at home for that divisional playoff game and improve your chances. They're going to have to fight with that mentality all year long. Certainly being at home against San Diego back in 1981 was a little bit of a home field advantage there. <laughs> no, that was a nobody advantage. Yeah. That was inhuman, the conditions that day. But uh, the Bengals were warmer because they were going to the Super Bowl afterward. All right, we'll see how the Bengals fare week two. Let's close with some baseball. We're two weeks away, about two weeks away from the end of the season. And the Indians are still in it. They have a chance at the wild card. Or They're do five that. out. Do no. that. Uh, I mean, they have a chance, obviously, but yeah, Indians fans are, are holding out hope, and that's great. But, you know, as we tape this, they're five games out, and there's three other teams there ahead of them that's, for that's one the spot. Right. Yeah. Now, if you're just five games out with one team ahead of you, you got some games with them, sure. In this scenario, I don't like their chances at all. It just, it, it just baffles me the way that the last couple of years the Indians have done this. Or they've had these fantastic second halves of the season. And even going back to when Eric Wedge was the manager, they'd have yeah. lousy first halves, fantastic second halves. How that continually happens is just beyond me. Well, I think with this year's team, we did see quite a turnover in their personnel. And they brought up young guys that struggled for a little while. Now they're starting mm -hmm. to gel together offensively a little bit. Their pitching is outstanding. And I think it does set up for... Uh, maybe not a springboard, but at least an indicator of how good they can be moving forward. I think in other years it was more fool's gold. They just got hot. But this year with all the younger guys, you would expect them to maybe improve by big chunks throughout the season. And Lindor making a push for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, honors. that's a good case in point. And Mark, just to credit you, we sat here a couple weeks ago and you told me the Mets were running away with the NOE. <laughs> well, they're running away with the NOE. So. Actually, the Nationals are running away. Yeah, well, yeah. The, yeah. someone's Mets just running happened away. to be yeah. there. No, the right. Mets have played really well. They're like 20 and 5 in their last 25 games. So yeah, it's yeah. not 2007 anymore. You can relax. All right. <laughs> we're not collapsing. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's going to do it for this press row. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you out there over the weekend. Enjoy all the high school football.